Hello and welcome to the Overlap live fan debate brought to you by Skybet. As the conclusion of the season hots up, we're here to dissect the winners and losers from the midweek fixtures. And who better to do that with than with Jamie Carragher and Gary Neville. <laughs> what's, what's going on here? Before we start, the, you, you are the high court of football. <laughs> And I'm bringing forward Jamie Carragher as the defendant for crimes against punditry. <laughs> <laughs> and how this is going to work, Josh, you are Judge Denzel. OK, I'll take that, I'll take that. I'm the prosecutor, and you are the defendant. Again. <laughs> <laughs> and how it's going to work is you're going to plead not guilty or guilty, and then the fans, jury, are going to decide. OK. Here we go. <laughs> Number one. Lissandro Martinez can't play in the Premier League. <laughs> guilty. Arsenal have a team of leaders. Not guilty. So you've got no leaders unless you're in the league? Well, put your defence forward to the... Who am I defending? Jamie Carragher said that they are a team of leaders. <laughs> Third one. Arsenal will get 93 to 94 points this season. <laughs> guilty. <laughs> Rashford needs to leave Manchester United oh. and Manchester United need to sell him. <laughs> when did you say that? Oh, he said I'm it. Not <laughs> guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Oh. 30 goals this season on the brink of What's Marcus Rashford. If he's that good, why hasn't he moved to a team who can win something? Is he guilty of the offence? <laughs> not, not guilty. Well, I don't think Found he's guilty. Found guilty, guilty. guilty by the, by, guilty by the jury. Funny, so. Not guilty. <laughs> he changed his mind on the Liverpool FSG ownership. He said that we don't need new owners on Sky Sports earlier in the season. He's now in a recent Telegraph piece said that because they pulled out of Bellingham, <laughs> maybe they're not suitable owners. <laughs> <laughs> guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. <laughs> not guilty. That is exactly what's happened. Stop taking in one line oh out of a newspaper <laughs> Honest to God. Is he guilty of defence or not guilty? Guilty. 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 Nonsense. Guilty of Liverpool fan? I'm on the fence. No, I'm he's, the fence. Guilty. <laughs> he <is> guilty. <laughs> he's done you. Oh. Erling Haaland chose the wrong club. Oh. Oh. <laughs> guilty. <laughs> You've been proven guilty of five out of the six offences. Well, for the Scouser, that's a result. <laughs> 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 I'm going to get straight into it. I, I enjoyed that little yeah, the courtroom saga. You know, you know, He'll bring mine next time, I'm yeah. sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, there's a few. Let's, let's, let's just rip the band-aid off. <laughs> Title race chat. It's done. Yes or no? Yeah. Yeah, it's done. I was really surprised by uh, Friday night, Southampton. Uh, sat in that commentary box, obviously you were in the stadium as well. And that's when you knew that this was... I think, far too much for this Arsenal group of players. Because, look, Anfield can happen. West Ham away, you know, sometimes it can happen. City away, you can get blitzed there. We've seen teams that, you know, that's happened to them quite regularly. Um, but you're playing against the bottom team at home and you're really struggling badly. And obviously, they came back in the game, it was deemed to be a, a positive. But when you put that collection of four games together, I think it was always going to be a case that it was going to be difficult to get over the line. Um, but they're finding it very difficult now, mentally and physically, those Arsenal players, uh, just generally to cope with what's happened. There's been a lot of talk over the last few months about them winning the league, um, and rightly so, they've been absolutely outstanding all season. Electric to watch, but they started to concede goals, they've started to make mistakes, they've started to look a little bit leggy in games, and now you've seen the performance levels drop. So it's, it's, it's a catalogue of errors, and. Uh, Sarah's of, of things happening. I'm not sure how they can get back on the bike from where they are. So I, I'm not even confident they'll beat Chelsea. I'm not confident they'll win at Newcastle. And I'm not confident that, to be fair, they'll beat Brighton. I, 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 Chelsea, I, I, the other ones are at Chelsea, surely. Just, <laughs> What's behind the road? The thing is, those players now are looking at Southampton as a difficult game. I think it is over. I'd like to think it's not because, you know, someone pointed out, I think, the other day that there was a, <coughs> that when City won their first league, they quote, bottled it, yeah. but then all of a sudden United went and drew to Everton, I think lost at Wigan or drew at Wigan, we, we, we ended up bottling it. So it can happen that it can swing back the other way. Let's give you a scenario, 
uh, Rodri and Haaland get injured against Real Madrid in the first game. What the hell? No, them, I, for me, they're the two players that I think if you took out Rodri, you're taking out a big part of City. You take out Haaland, you're taking out a massive part of City. Let's say those players got injured in, in a game and all of a sudden the Real Madrid game has been really messy. They go and get knocked out by them. They start to just all of a sudden, t you know, all of a sudden fall over a little bit and think that can happen. But it would need something of that type of nature to happen, I think, for it to swing. Because I'm not sure Arsenal can recover. Jimmy, have they blown the best chance that they'll have in the foreseeable future to win a league? Yeah, I think they have. And people are always keep looking at Arsenal's uh, sort of run this season. And sometimes in our, in our job, you compare it to other teams in, in this position, whether it's other teams going for a title. And you think of teams probably going back to the start of the Premier League where Manchester United just missed out, I think, against Leeds. And the first year of the Premier League, they win it. Liverpool with Man City, where they go really close, and then the next year, they win it. So there's, there's history of teams going close to a title, getting that experience, and then going again. I, I don't see that with Arsenal. I, do, I don't, and I, I just think this season's chance was massive because we, no one in this room actually thinks Manchester Arsenal are better than Man City. But you're thinking, could they win the league this season? Because maybe City have got games, or they were getting used to Haaland at the start, or they're not playing the, the normal football that they play. Something wasn't quite right, as, as the City fans said throughout the season. We're not the same, and you think could Arsenal nick the title this season? And then you think of next season, you think of. The other big teams coming back as well, who can't have as, as poor a season. And Arsenal can still improve, and I think they will improve next season. But I still don't think they're going to be, whatever it was, seven, eight points clear in, in March. What, I mean, that was an unbelievable position to be in. And as I said, they can be better next season, but they won't be in that position next season. We, we, we obviously, I put the, on, on that crimes against punditry sheet, talked about leaders, and I think th th what... What has sort of irked me a little bit over the last three, four, five months on the the, the Erdegaard, uh, Zinchenko, we're confusing leaders with really good professionals. So there are people who can lead, who are people who can affect other people's performances in the highest pressure moments yeah. in matches. And there are people who are just great professionals who come every single game, they love the team, they fight like that. So when Roy Keane left Manchester United, he was a genuine leader. Genuine leader, impacted us in the biggest moments, in the most pressurised moments, in matches where you're thinking, we're struggling here. But he'd just galvanise something, he'd pull you around, he'd get a grip of you. And then I took over, I'm not a Roy Keane leader of any shape. I'm a fantastic professional, I work my socks off and I do those things. So there's a, there's a, I'm giving, using myself as an example. Yeah. I look at Erdegaard, fantastic professional, Zinchenko, great professional. But when you actually get to the most yeah. highest pressurised moments in the biggest matches, in the crux of the season, are they leaders then, is what I was always referring to. And Arsenal's senior players, Partey, Zinchenko, Erdegaard, in the most difficult period, when those younger players like Saka and Martinelli needed that guidance, Jesus needed telling to stop running around and just stand up front and be, be really disciplined in how you play. They didn't impact the rest of their teammates, I don't believe, on the pitch. In fact, they contributed to the difficulties they were having <coughs> in the matches. Shaka at, um, at Anfield, Partey's performances in the last few games, um, I think Zinchenko gave a goal away in one game as well, was it? Uh, Liverpool game. Well, Liverpool and yeah, West Ham did yeah, it as well. And West Ham. And West Ham. Uh, probably had his most difficult match as well against uh, City. And then if you think of the huddle that Zinchenko did and Erdogan came over and said, break up. So those four players that are the leaders in that team have not been able at the moment that they needed it, those younger players, to really pull them together and keep them calm and composed. And that to me has been apparent in this last few weeks. Robbie, would you say we're leaderless? Or, or not, not necessarily leaderless, but we don't have those players that you'd want to stand behind in the tunnel, you'd want to go to war with? Obviously, we ain't got a, you know, it's not a Roy Keane type um, figure in the Arsenal team, but the, I think they have showed um, leadership. It's going for a bad moment, you know what I mean? Came up against um, an excellent team the other night and um, lost the game. But, you know, you can also look at it and say, Martin Odegaard the other night, you know what I mean? We're 3-1 we're down, facing absolute humiliation against Southampton. He's a person who sort of gets us back into the game and says to everybody, listen, not dead yet. We, can, you know, we nearly won that game in the end. So, you know, I, I wouldn't say there's been a lack of leadership. I think, I think we've just sort of, you know, hit um, a dip at the wrong time. And 
it, that's coincided with Man City being at their, their very, very best, you know. So, yeah, I mean, listen, it's, it, it was, uh, I was at the game the other night. It was a hard, hard watch. It was like we were too frightened. We showed too much respect, I felt, to Haaland and we got carved apart. And it's something that we have to learn from. But I wouldn't say we'd, we don't have leadership. I think we just came up against a team in Manchester City that, you know, I, I, at this I moment think, in time, they're a better team than I us. I think this thing of, of leadership, of bottling it, <clears throat> I mean, I, I don't agree with it. it, it it's and, too and much of a hard word, but no, it's I, bottling it. I, yeah, I, I, it's I bottling think that's it. too hard. Like a leader, as you mentioned Roy Keane, the first person, if, if someone's come to me, who would I mention Steven Gerrard, the Chelsea fan had mentioned John Terry, these players aren't playing anymore. They don't play. Mm. It's a yeah. different type of play. Who's this, who's this Roy Keane figure for Man City, even though they win everything? Liverpool have won lots over the last year. Who's the Steven Gerrard sort of captain that, of that figure? I just think it's a different type of mm. leadership. So I get what you're saying when you look like a, a Zinchenko or an older guy, their captain. <coughs> 10, 15 years ago, we don't think of those players as captains, those type of Tony Adams figures. That It's a different generation of players. This is the way it is now. Uh, and just because Arsenal might lose the league, I don't know, by seven or eight points or whatever it may be, it's not just that. They've got no leaders. They're just not as good as Man City. Yeah. And we all know that in this room. We've known it all season that they're not quite good I'll, enough. I'll use a different example. OK, I think Rodri is a leader for City. Um, but he's not a Roy Keane figure. But yeah. when, <laughs> when it's really difficult in matches, he takes the ball, he makes sure that the back four spread, he gets a goes and splits the back four, he goes and gets it in difficult positions, he controls the game, he composes everybody, and he brings leadership in difficult moments in matches against Bayern Munich or against uh, Arsenal at home. So if you're playing against West Ham away, you did a great piece on it on Monday Night Football, and you know, r suggesting Roy Keane was providing leadership through in galvanising people. He provided leadership through his composure on the pitch and through his actual leadership through how he played and making sure the full-backs still split. So you did a great piece on it, where in the first 10 minutes against West Ham, Arsenal's back four would split, they would deepen for a throw-in, they would get on the ball, they'd be in the shape, they'd play out from the back in their pattern. What happened in the second half when it got tough, they started just to push up the pitch, they got really clammy and tense, they didn't do the things that they were doing. So what you then need is someone on the pitch who says, hang on a minute, slow down. Yeah, split, our, split our back four, get your full backs wide, get your midfield players split, get your, fo get your high, uh, Mac Saka and Martinelli wide, do the things that you've been doing. Now that leadership can come on the pitch or it can come from off the pitch, but someone has to interfere when a game's going against you. So Rodri, I think, does it brilliantly for City. Edison, I think, does it brilliantly for City by making sure that they continue to play the same way. They don't change irrespective of the difficulties they're having in the matches. In the most difficult moments in the last four games that Arsenal have had, I've not seen anybody really composing the team and getting... They've started to do things that they didn't do all season. So forget the fact of, of this idea in your heads that you've got of Roy Keane going around and saying, come on, lads, come on. He didn't do that. Roy Keane never spoke to anybody in a football pitch about things like that. He would make sure, though, that when our goalkeeper got it, and Scholes, he would be the same, Nev, get wide. Dennis, get wide. You two split. He would make sure we did the right things. But I, in, Gary, I, 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 don't I don't think... I don't think stopped doing those things. I don't think Robert. it's leadership. I, I think, it is. And I, I think it's more... We've had a way of playing that has worked brilliantly for us, right? And I think in the past couple of games, and especially against on Man City, we should have adapted that a bit. We, especially after the fact that, you know, the last few games, especially away from home, where we shipped goals... We should have maybe adapted our style a little bit because we're coming up against Man City, not just um, a Man City that are hungry to try and win the title, but a, a city that's in the past few games have been on fire. And I think we should have adapted, but it's I think almost that's like. Though, Robbie, yeah, I think, yeah, yeah, I but, think but, 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 but no, no. No, because a lot of, a lot of us are saying, yeah. I'm not saying, I'm not saying go defensive, but I'm saying maybe switch the tactics up a bit because we knew. That we're going to be under the cross we for a lot this, of that game, and, and we had this in 13, 14. Everyone said when Liverpool lost to Chelsea in the title race, in hindsight, Brendan Rodgers didn't need to win that game; should have gone in and drawn it. Well, he didn't have that in his locker. It's all well and good saying it then, yeah, obviously. In no, but sometimes so, you, but, I don't think you can, but you can the say that. Up. No, you can say that about Pep. You know, he's always been known for playing one type of way, but. Actually, the two games he's played against Arsenal this season, he switched yeah. up his he's tactics. A better, yeah, but he's a better manager with better well, Yeah, he is, so that's what I'm saying. Can I feel... Can we just come back, though? Can we just come back to the point of... Look, I hate the phrase bottling it. It's, it's a derogatory term. It, it, it's, it's too negative. Stop using it, then. No, I've not used it. <laughs> no, but, but what we have to accept, that when it gets hot in the kitchen, in big sporting moments, whether it be golf, whether it be F1, whether it be 
you have to at that point prove yourselves and play and make sure you can deliver. That's that is how you define it. True. So my point is, Arsenal at this most difficult time of the season have not been to continue to be able to do the things that they've repetitively done for the previous parts of the season. That is a sign of losing your nerve and it's... not being able to deliver in the big moment. <clears throat> so my point is here, that is something we have to talk about. Because do you know in 97, 98, Robbie? We lost Roy Keane to a cruciate ligament injury uh, part way through the season. I think we were 12 points clear of Arsenal uh, in January. I think you had a couple of games in hand on us, but we were 12 points clear. And we'd already won a couple of titles, by the way. I think Peter Schmeichel was out for three or four weeks. And we ended up in that last part of the season just falling over. And I remember that, that mo those moments thinking... The, the sheer weight of expectation and the sheer feeling that you're coming for us when you're on our shoulder, you feel it. And that we, I, I wouldn't say, I would never say I bottled it, but your legs start to get heavy. Like Saka and Martinelli the other night, I was looking at them and I thought, they do have to get off the pitch. And he took them off yeah. because their legs had gone. But this and that's a sign. Well. Can I, I just, sorry, the thing about, did this thing about, if, if, if you win the league, so City have, have got the bottle, they've got the mentality, they've got leaders, and Arsenal haven't because they come a little bit short. So what you're talking about there, you've described yourself doing it. We've all done it. We've done it for England in tournaments. I've done it in big games. Man City, who have dominated the Premier League, won four out of five Premier Leagues this season. They did exactly the same in Real Madrid last season. Mm. So if you want to talk about bottle on it, mm. so all these yeah. leaders that Man City have got, Real Madrid, you had two goals, two goals, uh, you needed to concede, yeah, you conceded yeah. two yeah, goals later on. Now, yeah, okay, it was yeah, a bit of a freak, yeah. but you stopped playing. You yeah. started going long, you just didn't get on yeah. the ball, you just didn't want to pass it. So even these players that you're talking about, yeah, a Rodri's a leader or a different oh, type of players, but no matter who you are or what you've done, no, we've all Virginia, been and done, Karen, you're I haven't finished, you're right. we've all done what Arsenal have done, where you go, oh, you have that nervousness, you panic. You're exactly right, Arsenal have not done what they should have done in the last few games. But every team, we've won everything. Some of the best players in the uh, world. Uh, uh, we've uh, all been in that arena absolutely. where we've gone, but we can't, we can't we've stopped doing experience that. Deficit, no, we, that Madrid did to us what we did to them, is what I would say. And you talk about leadership, it's also experience, because even if Kevin De Bruyne isn't a natural leader, he's fearless. He's not scared of that game, he isn't. And we haven't even mentioned Ruben Diaz yet. Now, he is an instinctive, natural-born leader, and he does change this Manchester City side. And it is a coincidence that since he's come back into the team, the City defence is galvanised, the, the players look more confident within their own skin and uh, to me you look at Odegaard he could one day be um, uh, maybe as fearless as De Bruyne was in that game but he's just younger and he hasn't won that many titles yet and to me it's as much about leadership as it is experience in that situation because you look at City's team it's full of warriors throughout it as well like they were all up for the fight physically I, the reason I agree people with that say battling it is because they had two goal lead against yeah. Liverpool two goal lead against West Ham yeah doesn't the manager have to take some some criticism for it's, losing two two every, goal leads. Every right. team, that's that's hang a bit. If you, if you give yeah, up two two goal moments. leads, if you're losing you never three one, against yeah. if you're losing three one at home against the bottom team in the league, you did it last night. Oh, literally against. Yeah, the yeah, but we're, but like, we were challenging for the league. And okay, we're challenging for the top four. Liverpool and Jurgen Klopp lost the league to City three or four times, but never once did I look at them because they ran them close and they carried on playing the same way and they got to ninety nine points and they got to nine. Never once did I look at them thinking they're showing the signs or impact of difficulties in the most hardest moments. Arsenal are showing the signs of it. Liverpool lost the league, by the way, to City. But honestly, when they were going for the league with City, so the, you, you can finish second, by the way, and not feel the effects of it. Because I think Jurgen Klopp's team were unbelievable chasing well, down City. Well. That was Peter the, out. I think that's, no. that's the key. There, there was no... I think what's... This Arsenal fans will be upset about is the fact that it, it, it's been, it's been, it's Look, been a collapse. Whereas, yeah. as a City fan, I don't blame Arsenal though. I don't yeah. because that was Arsenal's biggest game of the season. That was City's biggest game in seven days. Like that's the difference what we're talking about. So here. But I mean, because we just played Bayern, so we're used to that right now. And we got Kyle Walker and Akanji and so on. Like that I don't. And as a City fan, I don't blame Saka and Martinelli for being maybe a little bit overawed by the occasion. I blame Arsenal. City yeah. are so <laughs> used to they're yeah, so Martin's used to being fun. around those games and like yeah, well, they're saying it's a bit young for them still. Like Arsenal are massive football club. This is a serious dis discussion. This isn't Leicester yeah. City. Uh, all these Arsenal fans are talking about it's like a one in a million shot to win the Premier League. This is a massive football institution, apparently the biggest club in London for a lot of people, not for me, because of Chelsea winning European silverware, unlike Arsenal. But how can you be, you know, leading against Southampton, <laughs> leading against West Ham? Seriously, because there's a point in the season where you should have been able to go to the Etihad and still lost the game and still win the Premier League title race. No, that listen, is bottling listen, it. Listen, yeah, yeah. well, like, well, then you bottled it last season, uh, as um, Jamie just said. When you well, played, we won the league last season. As a matter of fact, you, you bottled, bottled the Champions, Champions League, league the last. Season. You bottled the Champions yeah, League. The, oh, hold, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold yeah. on. You bottled the Champions League the last few seasons. So you, you, the word bottling it, 
Yeah, I mean, can I think that's a bit of a I'm going to say, right? I'm going to say, right? Like, you just said we bottled it, right? But, yeah, I mean, against Sevilla, you're two nil up as well. Yeah, okay. It's going to be the same thing. Every bottle is everything. I just say you bottled it. Yes, we did. No one was talking about the issue with the word bottling it when Spurs did it in Tottenham. because you invented the word. We've all bottled it. Oh, come on, please. I've got to defend that. Give it a new word. <laughs> <laughs> they called it not even bottling, they called it Spurs. They know. gave it a word. <laughs> right. That's all fine. Let's, let's not call Arsenal bottle How can you talk about bottle after <laughs> last week? <laughs> I'm saying let's not, let's not call on, Arsenal man. bottle drops. Let's not call them. But all I'd say on a very so, real, so level, on a very real level is that last season... We saw Arsenal capitulate. Weak mentality last season. Oh a complete capitulation to allow Spurs to get into the top four. And again, it happens this oh, season. No, no, the question needs to be asked of Arteta. I, I is he no, no, strong hold, enough to lead a team? Hold on, hold on. Let me, let, me, let, me, yeah. let, me, let me just say this, right? On last season, I'll give you that. We did, <laughs> and last, season. last season, we did capitulate, right? But this season, no. We, we, you know what I mean? If it weren't, clear, hold on. If it on, weren't for club, us, club. if it weren't for us this season, there would be no um, title. I don't care about that. I want to come to Pippa here. It's not small club mentality. I want to come to Pippa. And, and also, by the way, right? You know what I mean? Ain't quite over yet. I want to see what I want to see from Arsenal. Listen, I think that City will win the league. I want to see what I want to see from Arsenal. Uh, listen, I think that City will, pr- will go on and win the title, right? Mm. But what I want to see from Arsenal now is for us to finish the season strongly. No, you need and, to and, just go right. quietly into the night and not have... No, you've not gone, gone quietly into the night. night. <laughs> you shall be you've better. gone quietly into you the night. You're not even going to get Champions League football this season. You shall be better. I know you're hurt. I'm not being fresh, mate. All right, let's be not questions. OK, go on, Pippa. I've been trying to get to Pippa. You lot used to the front row. There's a lot of children. I'm surrounded by them. A lot of hurt teams. This style of them trying to defend Arsenal. This, this, this is what frustrates me. This, I've got no skin in the game. Let's leave it. This like, is what I <laughs> All I will say, can I just say this? As someone who's not even invested in any of <laughs> They were fifth last year and they were, they're still top. Exactly. Right? Thank you. They might not win the league, of course. Bottling it, listen, I can say my team bottles it every <laughs> single week at the moment. But I think Arsenal have been brilliant. If they come second, I think everyone in here, probably Ty wouldn't, but everyone else will probably say... They've had a tremendous season. It's a tremendous season, but I'm yeah. disappointed. I'm disappointed. <laughs> the thing that I, yeah, as you said, if we finish that a second, we should, I'll be disappointed personally, but the thing that frustrates me the most, as you can hear from in this room, is how much everyone's collaborating on watching <laughs> Arsenal fail when they would rather see a City team win continuously and they think it's because they'll feel like Arsenal fans will be insufferable if Arsenal win the league. What will be insufferable if Man City continue to win for the next five years and then Newcastle join them with the old Derby? I team? love Arsenal and fans being on the stream, by the way. <laughs> We've been saying this for years. Like the only people that have competed with City are Liverpool, right? You're the only people that can talk right now in this room. Everyone else saying bottled it, you bottle it through the season, you're bottling it for top four, you're bottling it for Europa Conference we got League. A trophy? Like, yeah, you've got a Carabao Cup, but congratulations. <laughs> but you're not in a title race. <laughs> we got a trophy. You're not in a title race, and we're the only ones that turn up to the race. You lot have tired your laces in the last couple of months. We've been there since August, September. But you bottled it. We haven't bottled it. All right, let's do it. We've been competing in the Premier League competition. You lost it against West Ham. We haven't even lost it. We haven't even lost it. We haven't even lost it. Wait until the end of the season. We're going to come back to you when we're talking about... The reason Pippa has to be silver. The reason Pippa, I think you're probably getting a little bit of stick of arse fans is because you have ridiculed, mocked... Everyone ridicules in, everyone. In the last three months, oh. you've absolutely ridiculed and mocked everybody who suggested you won't win the league. I haven't. I, I did a video of this guy here in front of me on, on Sky, and he suggested more Arsenal players in a combined 11 than City was. And I kept saying, that, to, him, no, hold I kept on. saying <laughs> to him, mate, wait a few months to hold see on. how this City yeah, time yeah, goes. At that time, though, we, we, at, yeah, you know, it was the time about, we did on, it. On current form. I actually genuinely think that City, to be fair, now, depending on... Look, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure Arsenal have got a recovery in them, but they, I hope they have, because it'll be a great end of the season. I think they could lose the league by 10 points. I think City could win by 10 points. I think, I, honestly, I think it'll be really difficult the next know, few weeks. I, I genuinely thought Gary was doing so well. <laughs> and then so, he just had to throw in that curveball. No, I, I just think the next... You know, oh, they got four points clear to win the two games in hand. I think you, I think Newcastle will be a problem for you. So, that, you know, we're obviously imagining City going to win games. I think you could end up sort of like six, seven points behind and it'll just become a little bit like, who cares then? I think that's when you'd start to drop points without even people realising it. Like I was saying before, sorry about that, about Arsenal, about just going quietly into the night. I, I was being a bit funny with it. But the point is, I think people need to remember that's a huge leap Arsenal have taken 
taken forward rather than go, well, there's a weight of expectation. Like now they've got to be the top team in the country. I think everyone will enjoy it and you'll have an easier ride almost and into next season. If everyone goes, wow, what a jump from fifth to second rather than, oh, Arsenal, a top team threw it away. That's a really hard mentality. To how many weeks kind of what happens when you spend 300 million pounds? Oh, no, 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 what you expect. What? But it is a, a big club, and they've been leading the Premier League for what thirty odd weeks of the season. I mean, no clubs ever led the Premier League that far into the season and not won the Premier League. They're, 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 they're not. No, they're not they're they're Kevin Newcastle vibes. Well, they're stacking them up next to Man City. It's ridiculous. City, we've yeah. all been there. That's a real vitriol guy. What are you putting me next to, my two? Yeah, I know. I've done you a disservice. Get to the floor manager later. Jamie, is the is the treble on? You think you're going to win the Man City going to win the league by ten points? Is the treble a genuine? Opportunity is it there for them? Yeah, I mean, I, I, is, I think it's 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 all on the Real Madrid game. Okay. I think City will win the league. I think they'll win the cup, the FA Cup against Man United. I don't think that'll be a massive problem for them. Do I you think know? no, no. <laughs> you think City batter United in the final? Yeah, I think they win. I, I don't think it'd be too much. But I think they'll win. Yeah, not a problem. With, you, with the centre backs that you've got, I think it won't be a problem for them. Why do you think going to beat Man City? I think we've got a chance. Why? Because of history. <laughs> You're just two teams. Yeah, was... You keep talking about this history. I think it's Manchester City are playing his history on that day. That's what we put in the group chat. Man City and I said, I'm going to go But I think it's all on the Real Madrid game because the other half of the Champions League draw, I don't think about any chance of, of you know, one of the Italian, one of the Milans in the, in the final. I don't think that would be a problem for uh, Man City at all. So I think it's all down to the Real Madrid game. And I do actually think Man City are a better team than Real Madrid, but Real Madrid have just got this thing. Yeah, something about them in the Champions League. They've got that belief. So I think they're going to do it, yeah, I do. Is there some nerves, like, you know, from, from, from you boys who won the treble? You can sit there and go, because that's, that's your thing. No, but look, at the end of the day, we can't do anything about it, number one. But, you know, you don't want... I don't want Manchester City to win the treble, irrespective of whether actually, to be fair, you know, I've won it or not. I don't want them to win the treble. But he's got it in him and it's Pep Guardiola. And But I, I, I look, I'm hoping, I think United have probably got more chance than Real Madrid. Just because of... I think United are one-off at Wembley. Um, I think that the centre-backs will be back, I'm hoping. I'm hoping our centre-backs will be back by then and we've got players fit. Um, I just think if we set up in such a way, I'm hoping that we go into the game with Fernandez on the right um, and that we stiffen up midfield with a Matt Tomini probably with Casemiro and, I don't know, Eric Snossabitza and we go a bit more sort of thoughtful in the game. I do, doing what Arsenal did with the three in midfield that was attacking, I think we need to be a little bit more... I think uh, Eric Tenai doesn't like doing this, he likes to dominate the ball. So you ask he the doesn't. He likes to dominate the ball. He likes to control he the ball. He wants to do that eventually. He's yeah. not that bothered about but it now. He, he does want to do it because that's why he didn't he, do it second half last he, night. He's, he's left Fred out for the last few months because he wants Ericsson. He keeps knocking it long to Beghost. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> right, I, I, I've got a little bit of insight as to why Fred's not playing. Sabitzer's playing because he, he can Spoke hold to the masse. Oh my god! <laughs> 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 right, so it's Sabitzer, Ericsson, Fernandez. He wants players who can take the ball because he's obviously that's that, every manager wants that. But I just think against City, having Bruno one step further up, like which we've done in certain games, being a bit more solid and making sure that we're just a bit more respectful, doing the opposite of what Arsenal did. We can't press City high and think we can basically keep possession off them and expose our centre back. So I think we've got to make sure we're a little bit more thoughtful in the game. Be in it with 15, 20 minutes to go. Be in it with 15, 20 minutes to go. I do think United. That has to be the... I think they've got a chance, United. I'm not saying they're going to win, because I don't feel that confident, but I've booked my tickets, I'm going down, and I've got a little bit of hope that tradition and history will look down on us. <laughs> <laughs> Is it safe to yeah. say for City fans that there's really out of the treble? It's crazy to say, but there's probably one important trophy for you guys, isn't there? Nah, Which one. one's more important for you? I, I always, if, if, if we were to win the Champions League, I've always wanted to win it on the year that we won the league as well. Like, I think it's just something about. <laughs> oh, Jesus I, Christ. I know that's oh, a oh, oh, going on here, man. What? What? No, I guess what they I meant by that is like, you know, when you see like Chelsea yeah. winning in like seven for whatever, and it's like, you're not the best team in Europe, you just won the. When I get me Ferrari, I want to make sure I get me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll take seven to the Champions League. I would take the Champions League. What would be like? That sounded much worse than it meant. I guess it meant when you actually. 
to win three games. It's Sam Terrell. Stephen, we're gonna, we're, I'll backtrack a little bit. We're going to we're bring forward those charges. Into, we, need to bring, <laughs> we need to bring forward those charges that you've got to try and bring them into this season. Hopefully there's a points deduction or something. I, could I guess the what I meant is I want to be able to confidently say you're the best team in Europe. Because I think sometimes you can you win are. a knockout coach trophy. Oh, Eve. Oh, is this because, <laughs> you spent, <laughs> because you kept doing us down for winning it in 18-19? Because we, we didn't win the league that season. So you don't have I'm not us coming that. back. That's what want to include. I think City yeah. fans look at you know, Spurs got to the final a few years ago. They were, they were terrible. Liverpool didn't win the league as well around that time. I think you want to win the Premier League first as a City fan. It's your bread and butter. It's the hardest league in the world. You look at the Spanish league, the, uh, the French league. It's not, they're not as competitive as they used to be. I think the Premier League is the best league in the world. You want to win that first, don't you? But you've bread won and butter. It. So don't you want the Champions League now? Yeah. I want the Premier League first every season. If the Champions League comes, that's a cherry on top. Brainwashed. Are you lot of miserable? What? Yeah, honest to God. God. <laughs> what nonsense. <laughs> 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 just because you sound complicated. The league's that important, you still yeah. call it bread and butter. That's what I meant, like, you know. <laughs> I was at the game the other night, they booed a Premier League anthem, they booed a Champions League anthem. Yeah, I mean, what? And it, and it, and it. He's like, boo on the surprise. He might even be in it next season. At Wembley, will you boo the national anthem? I do. <laughs> <laughs> so Man City obviously got they're in every every cup competition. So when you won the league in '99, how how did you deal with the I guess the, the the backlog of fixtures, knowing that every game is important now? Yeah, I mean to be fair, we 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 had a massive momentum um, and just kept rolling from match to match. Wednesday, Saturday, Wednesday, Sunday, whatever it was, um, and we had a manager. I tried to make this point unsuccessfully on Twitter yesterday to my friend here, that we had a manager, when these managers say they trust the squad, they actually don't, because to be fair, a lot, a lot of the managers that we see, including Pep, take the best players out of matches, they don't. Jurgen Klopp never did it, he always played his best team. So Alex Ferguson trusted his squad and made sure that he played. We, 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 he left out five, six players in the semi-final of the cup, he changed five players for the FA Cup final. He made massive changes that were risky. We were like, wow, how many changes are you making at the time? He was criticised for it uh, before games sometimes, saying, well, how can he leave him out? How can he leave him out? But he did that, and he made sure that everyone was still fresh towards the end. I don't think we dominated the ball like City do. I don't think City expand as much energy in games. They work hard, they work so hard, so it's nothing to do with that. But you keep so much control of a game, so much possession. They win games easier than we did. We had a lot of games where we had to come back in and it was a real struggle and it was a fight. We also, to be fair, in the FA Cup that season played Newcastle, Arsenal, Chelsea, Chelsea Liverpool. Liverpool, I think we played City. In the Champions League, we played Juventus, Barcelona, Bayern Munich twice, Inter Milan. We played, the, we played the best team in every competition and in the league, we had the best team that I think I ever played against domestically, which was the Arsenal double winning team of 97, 98 with the famous back five. So from that point of view, we put, I think we did it the hard way, but we never we expanded a lot of energy, but he had to rotate. City, I think, will just do it through being efficient, in control, their, their, their games have been a little bit easy. For instance, that game against Sheffield United on Sunday, mm -hmm. we had Arsenal in a double, we had Arsenal in the semi-final, if, you know, and then a replay. Think about that game against Sheffield United, it was a gimme. That was a gimme. We had Arsenal early in the season as well. And it's not our fault in the Premier League title <laughs> running. You know, you're talking about the double winners in the 90s. It's not our fault that we're playing against this soft Arsenal side in the Premier League title race. <laughs> it's not our fault, is it? It's not our fault. It's not our fault. Don't buy it. Don't buy it. Don't buy it. It's not our fault. If for any reason you don't win this league, or if for any reason you get knocked out of the championship. This is your Kevin Keegan moment, Robin. I'd love it if we did that. <laughs> Adam, Adam, I wouldn't use that as the part. Big up, big up, big up. Who's better, this Pep team, this Pep Man City team, or Gary's uh, treble winners? Right now, the treble winners, because they've, they've won the treble. I mean, if we revisit it after, uh, you know, see if City have done it, I think they will do it. I mean, I, I do this a lot. I, I love comparing players or different areas or teams. I think it creates debate and we can argue about it and it'll, you know, probably people will be split on it. But I mean, the, the only thing I would say is it's not the same team, but you think of like what Pep Guardiola did to, I think, the best Manchester United team, not the team that won the treble. I think the team of 08, 09, I think 2007. I think Manchester United got to three Champions League finals, I think, in four years. I think that was probably the best. Would you agree? The best. I, I, I always say that, but yeah. the treble just 
Yeah, because right. they they've done it. Yeah, yeah, I get yeah. that. They, they that team was that, probably the best. Yeah, that extra step. And I just think of, of what Pep Guardiola... Yeah, it was Barcelona, and that's, that's the best team I've ever seen. But I still think of what those teams did to the best Manchester United team I've seen. And Man, Man City aren't as good as that team, but it's just that the Pep Guardiola factor of, you know, how he sets teams up, how he plays in games. You know, it, it, who knows who, who would have won. But I, I just... I, I think if City do go on and do the Champions you have to justify it and say, well, we did match them in terms of trophies. I'd probably just say uh, Manchester City. The one thing that we, we had at the time is we never really spoke about it. And I was only 10, so I just barely remember it. But we never really spoke about it because we won the league on the last day of the season. So we never had that, oh, the league's in the bag, we've got a cup final to look for. So that's one thing that could count on City is the constant talk about a treble. You're playing Real Madrid, you're playing Man United, history comes into it. I think that could hopefully like, topple the how many times? How many times have you seen it when it's like, you know, even Liverpool fans are quadruples on and, and then the next week no, suddenly... This, this is the closest. This is, this is real now. Yeah. I, even for me, in the past when I've heard like the Liverpool win the quadruple, I didn't pay a lot of attention to it. To be honest. And I think... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Do you want to get that text message you sent me? <laughs> no, 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 what I'm saying is Liverpool... Liverpool had lots of hurdles that they had to get over and there was always a good chance that they wouldn't do it, even though there was a chance they could, but there was a good chance they would. With this now, this is real this. City looked absolutely fired up like mad. That game against Bayern Munich in the, in the, at the Etihad, I thought was an unbelievable match to watch. I thought it was one of the top games I've seen. So the first half, was I thought they were amazing. I thought City were amazing. It was absolutely brilliant. But when you're playing at that level that City are in those games, like they were against Arsenal the other night, difficult to stop that. So you are going to have to rely upon something. Sometimes something happens that you can't explain. Usually happens to clubs like Liverpool, Real Madrid, sometimes Manchester United. These clubs do somehow have that... I don't know what it is. You can't even explain it. City have missed it in the Champions League. They've missed it in the Champions League for a few years. PSG have missed it. They've had the best players, the most expensive squads, but sometimes that weight of something just plays on you. So there's a long way to go for City, but I do feel like it's a real opportunity for them. They may never get into a position again where they've got... I mean, I thought I saw an article this morning, I think it was James Ducker or someone did it, where they said, actually, City have got like 11 games or 12 games, but they've actually only got three, really. They've got to play Real Madrid twice and Man United yeah. to win a treble. That's it. United's the issue in the Centurion season. Obviously, we faced you at the Etihad. It was the earliest anyone could ever win a league. I think it was obviously to win the title against Man United. And then Pogba scores a goal out of nowhere. Chris Small in as well. And we, we lose the game yeah. um, out of nowhere. We could have got 103 points that season. So, you know, United have done it to us before and they could definitely, in the FA Cup final, you know, score a corner, red cards, Carl Walker, a mistake from Edison, anything can happen. Offside goal, giving us a goal. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> I hope that's the case. That would be the best yeah. thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> all right, stuff. right, guys, that's all we've got time for. Thanks so much. We'll be back after the break with more football chat.